in the various lessons leading up to this particular lesson we have seen the ideology of fascism and nazism we have seen the leaders behind these ideologies and we also saw how these ideologies were able to form their own governments and then rise to power as the sole ideology of these nations of the nations of italy and germany for fascism and nazism respectively but we also have mentioned how fascism had inspired nazism as an ideology and it was from the very basics of fascism where nazism arose now since these ideologies are often called the twin authoritarian ideologies of the interwar period there comes a point where we have to put them up for comparison and therefore in this lesson we would be starting a comparative analysis of nazism and fascism where we will be seeing the similarities between these ideologies and also would be focusing upon the dissimilarities between them let us first start by looking at the similarities between these two ideologies so we have mentioned how fascism and nazism are considered to be twin ideologies and therefore they must have a lot of similarities which makes them live up to the name of being twin ideologies so while discussing similarities there can be two kinds of similarities that we would be discussing in this particular lesson regarding fascism and nazism the first set of similarities would be ideological or how fascism and nazism were similar in their aims the other set is the execution similarities how after nazism and fascism were able to come to power how much could they translate their aims into policies and how these two ideologies were similar at the execution or the policies of their ideologies now while we will see that both the ideologies have very similar aims we will not see very similar policies perhaps as often is the case that the aims truly translate into policies so let us start by looking at the ideological similarities between fascism and nazism or the similarities regarding their aims the first similarity in aim happens to be how both the ideologies wanted to restore the status and the past glory of their respective nations so both these ideologies under the leadership of hitler in case of nazism and mussolini in case of fascism were actually trying to restore the status and the past glory of their respective nations which is germany in case of hitler and italy in case of mussolini they also went as far as to portray the nation itself they belong to as a living thing having its own emotions and its own sentiments and its own demands and since the nation was a living thing its interests were supreme so therefore the national interest in these ideologies were considered to be supreme as the nation was a living thing and since the nation has emotions it also had humiliation and since the nations had faced humiliation after the first world war in one way or the other mussolini and hitler convinced the people of their respective nations that only they can restore the status and the past glory of their nations and that they did through propaganda mechanisms as you can see in this picture the first being a propaganda stamp of mussolini and you can see how he is projected to be a harbinger of italian glory and on the other side you see a nazi propaganda where you can see how a german soldier or particularly a brown shirt of the nazi party is carrying the swastika flag against the backdrop of a medieval german castle which was a height of german history and glory so we can see that they use propaganda mechanisms to convince the people that only they can restore the past glory and status of their respective nations which were stripped of the nation after the first world war and which had also hurt the nation and therefore in the supreme interest of the nation the glory and status has to be restored and that can only be done by them while discussing about fascism and nazism separately we saw how both of them had a common ideological rival which happens to be communism now there were many reasons why fascism and nazism was opposed to communism the first was how communism was trying to be a better alternative to democratic governments in the countries they belong to so if we remember that when the democracies of italy and germany were failing and the people were looking for alternatives in terms of alternatives 
communism was rising up in popularity alongside fascism and nazism in case of italy and germany respectively now there was one advantage that communism had over fascism and nazism and that was that it already had been applied to a state previously so we already know that by the communist revolution russia had become a communist nation or bolshevik russia itself so the people could now look at a physical ideal as to how there exists a better state under communism and they don't have to listen to the various promises and projections made by the fascists or the nazis who do not have this ideal or this concrete evidence where that the ideology really works on a state or not and therefore this was an advantage that communism had which automatically made fascism and nazism feel threatened from them second if you remember both nazism and fascism were funded by capitalists and elites who feared a communist revolution and therefore funded and supported the fascists and nazis to counter the communists now the ideology lies where the money lies and since the fascists and nazis were supported by the capitalists they therefore were anti communist and finally communism itself was opposed to these militant nationalist ideologies namely fascism and nazism which made it an ideological rival itself so therefore we understand that both fascism and nazism were opposed to communism and in their ideology they were fiercely anti communist and they also wanted to prevent the spread of communism throughout europe and in this they joined the active anti communist trend in europe at this point where most european countries were threatened by communist revolution both the fascists and the nazis joined this wave to further their anti communist interests so in this picture you can see an anti communist poster where it's showing that it's everybody's job to stop communism so communism is shadowing over europe and this particular person who is holding a sword of democracy is cutting down communism and trying to stop it from entering and taking over europe because communism in this particular poster a propaganda poster is being portrayed as a scourge of europe as something that can completely wipe europe off the map and therefore it's everybody's job to stop communism as this propaganda poster says Now not much has to be said about the economies of Germany and Italy after the first world war while the entire world suffered a catastrophe after the war these countries particularly germany somehow had it worse which led to the complete breakdown of the economies of these countries now unemployment poverty starvation debt related suicide which is when a person cannot make the payment he is supposed to make and therefore gives up on his own life and even hyperinflation which is a condition where the prices of goods go up astronomically all these things had become rampant or become very common in italy and germany after the first world war this is what the ideologies of fascism and nazism wanted to solve they wanted to solve the post war economic crises in these countries or in their own countries namely nazism for germany and fascism for italy and they wanted to be the answer to the call made by the people for a power or a better government which can solve their problems and remove their miseries so over here we see a couple of pictures which properly showcase the post first world war or the interwar period crisis or the economic crisis where there was unemployment there was utter poverty starvation among children and overall economic collapse particularly in italy and germany which these ideologies both aim to solve and be the answer for all the prayers made by the people of their countries but of course they wanted to utilize the crisis so that they could rise to power in this particular situation Now we remember how the people of Germany and Italy both were frustrated with their liberal democratic governments. This is because they wanted a strong government, one which could make its own decisions. They also wanted a stable government, one which stays long enough to see to the execution of their policies 
and of course they wanted a nationalistic government one that does not hesitate to take any action possible for the interests of the nation now the liberal democratic government was not what they wanted and therefore they were looking for alternatives both hitler and mussolini convinced the people that their ideologies which is Nazism and fascism are the answer to this particular problem that they have and they convince the people that the strong and stable government that they're looking for can only be achieved if a dictatorship is formed at the center where all the power would be vested in the hands of one leader and who would be the leaders of course they themselves which is hitler in case of nazism and mussolini in case of fascism therefore both of them wanted to form a dictatorship at the center by convincing the people that the only way to achieve a strong and stable government is through a dictatorship now both hitler and mussolini were fiercely nationalistic and therefore in their ideologies they made sure that nationalism finds a center point therefore both of them stressed on the importance of nationalism even aggressive nationalism where everything is justified even war as long as it's done to further the interests of one's own nation so therefore they stressed on nationalism and even wanted to abolish individual institutions so they only wanted to keep national institutions whatever institutions or organizations that would exist in their countries once they do come to power they would all be national for the sake and for the purpose and the interest of the nation itself which is supreme the state is supreme because the state would be nationalistic Now both Hitler and Mussolini wanted to undo the Treaty of Versailles all in all all of its terms because they felt that the treaty had been unfair for their respective countries in its own ways. So therefore what they wanted to do is to throw the Treaty of Versailles in the dustbin and move ahead with their own policies that were violation with the Treaty of Versailles such as furthering the national interests of their nations through aggressive foreign policy something which the treaty of versailles is restricting them from doing especially in case of germany so the treaty of versailles was to be chucked in the dustbin by both hitler and mussolini as had been showcased in their ideologies and their intentions now can you answer this question which treaty did the fascists and the nazis desire to undo was it the treaty of lutheran was it the treaty of versailles was it the treaty of london or was it the treaty of lausanne the correct answer happens to be the treaty of versailles now both fascism and nazism wanted to achieve economic progress through the progress of industries but to have a progress of industries there needs to be industrial peace or no disruption in the working or the functioning of industries and therefore both these ideologies wanted to avoid disruption even to the extent of banning any means of showcasing disruption altogether so that industrial peace is achieved and industrial progress is continued now this particular dissent often comes from the workers and therefore both the ideologies wanted to control workers dissent particularly the right to workers strike and they wanted to take the workers right to strike away and instead promise them that their dissent or their discontentment would be heard by the government itself and there would need not be any requirement for dissent or disruption so now that we have seen the similarities between the ideologies or the aims of the ideologies let us now look at the similarities between nazism and fascism in case of their policies or how they were executing the aims that they had so the first similarity in policy we were looking at is the establishment of a one man rule so when both of these ideologies came to power in their respective nations they established a one man rule or gave the entire power of the state into the hands of one individual which is hitler in the case of nazi germany and mussolini in the case of fascist italy now when this one man rule was established it also was a direct negation 
of democracy because democracy existed in these particular countries before the establishment of the fascist or the Nazi government in Italy or Germany. And when these ideologies established their stronghold on power, they set up a one-man rule which was a negation of democracy. So now in Germany, the one person who everyone had to listen to was Hitler himself and in Italy the supreme leader was Mussolini himself. So we can understand that the one-man rule was established and democracy was negated in the very first policy execution of these particular ideologies when they came to power. Now, through their execution of policies, both of these ideologies established that a state is supreme both in Nazi Germany and fascist Italy. And since the state is supreme, its interests are also supreme. And the interests of the state were put under a totalitarian government, a government which controls all power and it also executes the entire power as it is safeguarding the interests of the state. And since the state is supreme, the state's interests are also supreme. And therefore, a totalitarian government's decisions are final because it's a state's decision. Now we saw how both Hitler and Mussolini were fiercely nationalistic and when they came to power they made sure that aggressive nationalism becomes a core tenet of their government and also the Nazi and fascist state itself. So aggressive nationalism almost became a state policy where this particular policy demanded that every individual of these states should make whatever sacrifices required to make their respective nations a great nation. So aggressive nationalism from being a sentiment became a policy, became an execution of the government when aggressive nationalism was made to be a core tenet of the Nazi and the fascist state. Now both Hitler and Mussolini believed that a nation's greatness can only be measured by its military capacity. And therefore, when they came to power, they made sure that they established a mighty and great military themselves. So both Hitler and Mussolini had great military capabilities and also had the strength of numbers when it came to their mighty armies. So on the left here, we can see the fastest army marching ahead. And the right over here, we see the Nazi army is also marching. Now both these army were the pride and the strength of the fascist state and the Nazi state itself because militarism was a core policy of both of these states established by the ideologies. Now, As previously mentioned, both the ideologies were fiercely anti-communist and when these particular ideologies came to power in their respective nations, they both pursued a fiercely anti-communist campaign where even the paramilitary forces were used to pursue and seek out the communists and remove them from positions of opposition even to the extent of killing them at a mass scale. So therefore, both Hitler and Mussolini when came to power, when they were rising up to power, were following fiercely anti-communist campaigns. Apart from pursuing and killing the communists, Hitler and Mussolini also managed to make the public go against communism. As both Hitler and Mussolini were able to convince the public that the reason for all their miseries were actually the communists and therefore the communists need to be eradicated. You see, they were able to convince the public and the communists were the scourge of Europe. If given an opportunity, they will bleed Europe dry. And therefore, through propaganda mechanisms, both Germany and Italy, under Hitler and Mussolini respectively, were able to continue an anti-communist campaign which actually got to the hearts of the people. So over here we see two anti-communist propaganda posters. The one on the left belongs to Nazi Germany, one on the right belongs to fascist Italy. So in this particular fascist anti-communist propaganda poster, we see that this particular poster says Qualis Signo Vincera, which means which sign will win. We see two signs over here, which is the cross of Christianity and of course the communist sickle and hammer. So it says that will Christianity win or will communism win? Why don't you decide? That is the question put forward to the fascist public. And if you remember, 
Christianity was the state religion of fascist Italy and therefore fascist Italy is showing a war between two symbols Christianity and communism as communism is an atheistic ideology that does not believe in religion what this poster is saying that if you choose communism you will have to forsake your religion which is Christianity now in this particular poster on the left which is a German or Nazi German anti-communist propaganda poster it shows that a process prosperous Germany that also happens to include parts of France which shows that Germany had aggressive intentions or expansionist intentions so a prosperous Germany having industries and agriculture is giving the Soviet Russia or the communist state of Russia a fierce punch or it's punching Russia back so basically Germany is stopping Russia from expanding into other parts of Europe and over here it says Europa Sieg Dein Wostan which means Europe's victory is your prosperity so it, it's telling people that if Europe does not win against the onslaught of communism then your prosperity would be taken away and your prosperity will be restored if Europe wins in this war against communism and who is leading the war against communism according to this poster Germany and its firm and strong hand therefore in this particular lesson we started our first part of a comparative analysis between Nazism and fascism so we looked at the similarities between these two ideologies which truly make it twin ideologies and we also were able to understand what the similarities between these two ideologies lie in the ambitions or aims and what are the similarities in the execution or policies as well and in the next lesson we would be continuing this comparative analysis by looking at the dissimilarities between these two ideologies don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So add Delta Step. Learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.